Okay, so probably a little bit early. Uh, so I gradually start my talk. And uh, well, first I have to say that the, yesterday there was uh, uh, after my talk, many people came to me to ask some questions, but there was not enough time for discussion. Uh, so I, uh, today I want to leave some time for this uh, question and uh, answer to my talk. And also, uh, it is <coughs> it is uh, time is limited for individual questions, so it may be better to ask questions after my talk. Just raise my uh, raise your hand. And also the another announcement is today. There are two perks, and originally the first perk is for the data-driven method in material science, as I have shown here. And the second perk is systematic parallelized experiment. But uh, probably uh, it's better to shorten somehow. Uh, so I have rearranged uh, the, uh, in my content, and uh, I will include this systematic parallelized experiment in the first perk. And in the second part, I will talk about uh, uh, something uh, uh, called machine learning potential, which is based on first principles of calculation. Uh, but, uh, uh, it's quite useful for uh, large scale simulation. So that is uh, something, uh, a kind of announcement. So let me start. Uh, the first part of my talk is related to the recommender system, which I have uh, somehow uh, talked yesterday. That is uh, quite often used in e-commerce. And uh, this was already I talked. I talked about the traditional way to discover new compound based on similarities. And uh, we expanded this method in some way to be able to include many uh, features. So this is a 500-dimensional space, and we took all these data registered in ICSD. And uh, again, we made a grid in this 500-dimensional space uh, to have this initial data. Then uh, after classification, uh, binary classification technique, there are many di different kinds of binary classification technique. And uh, there is no clear logic, but uh, if the prediction works nicely, it means the validation is successful, then it is a uh, classifier. So we found that these three classifiers are quite useful. And uh, we did that this random classification uh, works uh, the best. <coughs> but this was what we obtained. Uh, uh, get to the experiment first. So those are some areas uh, of what I have talked yesterday. And I will talk uh, a little bit uh, more about this recommender system, and that is an uh, improvement of the recommender system using the modern uh, uh, data science technique. And the, the method is called tensor decomposition. Other than the method, uh, and the purpose and also the, uh, the database are the same. Okay, so uh, in the recommender system, uh, like in Amazon.com, they have a huge list of customers. Uh, this is the user's item purchase record. And in case of Amazon, the number of users or customers is sometimes million billions over the world, probably more than one billion, because that has been doing very good business. And uh, there's a huge user, user list, and they know who bought which item. It's a huge, uh, this is matrix, and uh, based on that data, when uh, some new customer comes, uh, they recommend something. And uh, for the 
target user, especially on the commentation scores for that target user, so they pinpoint uh, advertisement. That is the recommend uh, the system algorithm behind that. So we use this technique for the search of uh, CRC, chemical derivative. The technique is very simple. This is the dating matrix or customer's purchase record. And what they do is based on the assumption that people with similar taste tend to buy similar items. This is unsupported uh, assumption from the mathematics or from the physics viewpoint. But in the social science, well, it's quite acceptable. <coughs> All people have a similar taste. Uh, if your friend has a similar taste, well, she or he may be interested in the similar product. So that is uh, unsupported, but quite reasonable assumption. And based on that assumption, this is in the mathematics language, it is called a low rank structure of this type of matrix, rating matrix. If this works, then we can decompose into this matrix into a few smaller uh, matrix. And then, uh, after well, this was made by just the arrangement of this uh, matrix element, so the customer list here is A, B, C, D, E, but here is change A, C, H, E, something, and uh, also item are uh, different. So uh, the orders of the uh, each element are different. But in that way, uh, we can understand that A, C, H, those customers have similar taste. So probably uh, this customer, A and C, is interested in buying this product number three. The similar thing is for the uh, customer age for item two. This is a uh, matrix uh, uh, decomposition. So we try to apply this to the search of chemical derivatives system composition. The candidate of chemical space uh, yesterday was something like one. 1.8 million. We try to extend that to larger uh, chemical space. So we have chosen the Turner system with A, B, small contract, A, B, C with this ratio up to 8, then it becomes 7.4 uh, million. Then in the case of Greenery, with five elements, if the, and this small number is uh, uh, less than 20, then it becomes 23 billion. It is a lot of uh, uh, combination and, and uh, a huge chemistry space. They are composed of 66 cations shown here and 10 anions shown here. So we restrict for the uh, ionic systems there. So this is our third space which is larger than the uh, one I have shown yesterday. Compare with those uh, candidates. Candidate is uh, 74 or 7.4 million or 23 billion. Compare with that, our uh, database is very limited. But this is the only database available uh, and we can use, so there are no other ways we need to use them. So there are, you can see that uh, there are many others from the difference, but to search this space, we use this data. <coughs> and also, there is a huge overlapping between uh, different databases the, the similar to the talk yesterday, we use only ICSD data for training and for the validation, we use this pink area, uh, ICDD or string material, which is 
not included in ICSP as a test set. So this is a number of data in a test set. So uh, let's see what happens. <coughs> so instead of using the uh, rating matrix, we will use tensor. And the tensor is composed of uh, uh, like that, cat M type, anion type, integer set in this case. Uh, this is for the binary uh, case. And uh, so binary material contains uh, less than 1 million, just 110,000. But uh, this is a uh, third order tensor. If you increase the number of elements, then it becomes fourth order, fifth order tensor, which is not easy to gra graphically show. So uh, allow me to uh, explain with the binary system. And uh, they are all in a categorical data. So it's not a value, but just uh, uh, is a number. Uh, not a number, it's a character or category. Also, the integer set. Uh, this is not used as a percentage or something, but just uh, category. So, for example, TS304 is a material located here, which is composed of TI as a cation, oxygen as an ion, and the 3 to 4 as an integer set. Uh, for the tensor factorization or tensor decomposition, there are many, many different techniques. And especially these days, uh, uh, it's become quite popular uh, because of the emergence of big data analysis. And uh, there are many uh, methods available, but among them, this uh, uh, two methods, canonical, polyadic, and uh, higher order singular value token. So to be quite useful. And we tested both. By the way, they are available in a, a software, open software called Psyche Tensor. So we can just download and use them. And we found that Taka decomposition works much better. The Taka decomposition uh, performed that this is a huge tensor, and it decomposed to this small tensor, this is called core tensor, with three matrices. So in that way, tensors are decomposed to small tensors. So let me show the uh, result or performance of local decomposition. So this figure shows <coughs> the horizontal axis corresponds to the length of this core tensor. So there are uh, four numbers here this, because this is for sort of the tensor for the ternary uh, system. And the vertical axis corresponds to the number of fractions I pop up to switch from there. Uh, stopwatch. <laughs> so vertical axis corresponds to the number of correct answers included in ICDD. And Spiegel theorem. So it means number of correct answers or success rate. The yellow or uh, orange one corresponds to the top 100 completion with uh, high predictive rating from uh, number one to number 100. So, firstly, I found that this is almost independent of the choice of the land. So the result is more or less similar. And also, the number of uh, correct answers were something like 50 to 60. So this is only within top 100 candidates. So it means discovery rate for this case is something like 59%. This is really surprising to us uh, when we did this analysis because remember that what we did is just exchange elements. No elemental features, no prior knowledge, no solid state chemistry knowledge, nothing used, no first principle result used. Just by exchanging the elements. 
then we were able to find such a high discovery rate. The, it is the same for this blue one. Blue one is for top 3,000 compression with high predictive rating. Still, the discovery rate was uh, more than 25%. Yesterday, I talked about the Menda system with uh, elemental features, 500 dimensional space using electronic activity or arctic number or so on. And at that time, the discovery rate was something like 15%. Even 50%, we were so happy and gave the data to the experimentalists. But uh, this uh, uh, tensor decompression performed much better than the previous method. So this uh, works quite nicely we found. The, it is not only for the ternary system. This is, uh, again, the vertical axis corresponds to the number of correct answers. This is the number of samples from top 1 to top 100. The success rate uh, top 100 was 59% for ternary. For quarter, for ternary, it was uh, also 52%, not so different. But for quinary system, it was lower, 15%. We know the reason for that. It is because the number of uh, input data is much smaller in the system. Because in the system, people uh, do not want to do such a uh, complicated uh, uh, compression to do experiment or uh, just mix up uh, many uh, elements to find out some new material is very time consuming. So people do not do much experiment for the quinary system. So they did more experiment for the ternary system. That's the reason why the quinary system data is probability. This, this is just uh, up to 100, but, uh, so it corresponds to here. The, the tendency is more similar up to uh, top 3,000 uh, ranking. The <coughs> But uh, the 15% of success rate for quinary system is still quite satisfactory because we have to handle for the quinary system 23 billion of combination. And uh, to search something in the 23 billion of the world without any uh, clear knowledge or without any indication or without map is very, very uh, difficult. Even 15% of knowledge uh, should be very uh, useful for cleaner system review. <clears throat> so for us, uh, when we obtain this result, of course we want to confirm that the results are good enough or not. Of course, one way was uh, to examine them in the test set. If the test data is available in the test set, of course, we judge that as a uh, chemical development competition. But the other way is, uh, of course, one way is to do a systematic experiment, but uh, to perform millions or billions of uh, experiments is not uh, practical. So instead, we use uh, first principles calculation to examine whether they are dynamically or uh, some dynamically stable or not. Because for us, the first principles correct is a kind of routine. <coughs> the, this is a, a further investigation of, by first principles correction for pseudo-binary compound with high predicted uh, rating. In rubidium oxide, indium oxide, uh, we found two uh, uh, should a binary compound which shows quite high predicted rate, <coughs> but they were not yet reported by experiment. So <coughs> we did systematic first principles calculation for this system. This is rather busy picture, but the conclusion is that the, both of these two materials were found to be located on the convex arm, somewhere like this. So they are confirmed to be thermodynamically stable. 
Let me explain a little bit more about this picture. Uh, there are many, many uh, dots here. The, all of them correspond to the uh, one first principle of Cartesian structure optimized. First principle of Cartesian to get uh, uh, this formation of it. But the difference is the different structures. And we took many different structures from the uh, ICSD database. ICSD has uh, many uh, different, uh, they registered many different structures for, for example, in this case, uh, one, one, two type of uh, income compression. Then we took all, the <coughs> all of those structures and the optimized structure to have energy. The one of the lowest energy one uh, was located here. <coughs> We, <clears throat> we had to do that because uh, we did not know the chemical uh, structure of uh, this material because this was not yet reported. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the other one, this, this was uh, already reported in ICTD, the spring material. So this was used as a test. So we computed these two, and uh, they were on the complex. So in that way, by first principles calculation, this uh, predicted uh, result was well confirmed. <coughs> the similar information <coughs> was performed for 27 uh, different uh, compression pseudo binary systems and found that 23 among 27 uh, compressions are located on the complex hull, so it means they are dynamic, some dynamic stable by DFT. So this is quite satisfactory result and our prediction uh, without any clear knowledge just by the, uh, the arrangement of cancer element are uh, uh, well confirmed by DFT calculation. So we are quite happy with those results. And uh, <coughs> we put, uh, instead of giving all data to individual researchers, we put this data as an open database. So if you're interested, uh, you can look at those uh, sort of database systems or others. <coughs> it is available in GitHub. And uh, of course, uh, once uh, uh, this uh, new CLC uh, somehow went down, uh, we want to produce that new material by ourselves. <coughs> but we are not 100% uh, professional of uh, material synthesis uh, experiment. Rather than that, we call ourselves like a weekend cooker. Uh, we cook only on weekend just for hobby. That, that kind of <clears throat> But uh, for weekend cookers, synthesis of as yet unknown materials is quite difficult because if it is known, then there is a, some kind of cooking step by step book, and then we can just follow that to produce that. But uh, synthesis recipe of as yet unknown compound is not given in this type of cooking book. So what we have to do is to ask the senses, the expert, uh, how they think, how to synthesize the material. But even for senses expert, for as yet unknown materials, they cannot provide clear answer. They may say, well, probably it means uh, high pressure to synthesize that, but high oxygen pressure to synthesize that, and so on. And the senses expert are not always have time to uh, consult us. <clears throat> Instead, we try to use artificial intelligence, something like chat GPT. If we can ask uh, the sensor material to chat GPT and if they provide correct answer, well, of course it's fine. But for that purpose, probably we need a little bit a good source of data. <clears throat> that is the topics of the second part my talk. <coughs> this book was transferred from the C 
second part of today's lecture to the first part. So this is a synthesis condition recommender system based on parallel experimental data. This was mainly done by this uh, younger uh, colleague, uh, Hayashi. <coughs> the, this is our uh, weekend kitchen to try to synthesize uh, materials in a parallel fashion. And uh, this is called uh, polymerized complex method. And, uh, Chemists may know this method, but uh, uh, if you are not familiar, uh, let me explain a little bit. <coughs> we prepare some uh, solutions from the starting material. The, this contains, for example, element X, and this contains element Y, and this contains element A, B, C, and so on. And uh, we use uh, uh, this type of robot to take predetermined amount of this liquid, like one milliliter or five milliliter, uh, to uh, make the desired uh, mixture. And we use this type of robot to take one milliliter from here, one milliliter from here, uh, and mix it in uh, some of the, these places. So since we use this uh, high temperature synthesis for ceramic materials, we have to put all of them into these crucibles. But they are all done by <coughs> Because it's weak and nobody wants to work. So let's uh, let um, uh, robot do that work. And dry that. And then fire that high, high temperature. Uh, at the present moment, we do not have a robot to put it into the fire oven, so somebody should do that. The, after firing, also we have to, somebody have to take the, uh, each of this crucible from the furnace and just put it in a plate to examine automatic powder X-ray diffraction. This can be done automatically, and so if we put uh, 200 samples, uh, uh, these samples are automatically measured one by one. <coughs> the next morning, we can get a series of uh, this extra diffraction data. So we use not only polymerized complex method because this is uh, some kind of special technique. This is quite universal, but for some purposes, it is not very useful. And uh, sometimes uh, very traditional powder mixing method works better. So this is just an example of polarized uh, experiment. <coughs> but uh, let me explain uh, with this method. <coughs> for that purpose, uh, so for polymerized complex method, uh, for the starting material, we have chosen 28 elements from the periodic table. And also, the I'm sorry, the small attractors, but uh, 32 starting materials, uh, some of them are chloride, and uh, some of them are uh, some uh, NO3, uh, material, or peroxide, and so on. The, those 32 starting materials were used uh, and made as a preparing solution. And for the target, as a weekend cookers, we cannot do uh, nitride or uh, phosphide, sulfide, those materials which requires very uh, uh, careful treatment for handling. Instead, oxide materials are much easier to be synthesized, like using this type of furnace, conventional furnace. So we restrict ourselves for the oxide synthesis of oxide. So for 28 elements and uh, 23, the seven compositions, altogether the candidate composition becomes something like uh, 10,000. So composition means 1 to 10, 1 to 9, 1 to 8, or something like that. The 
within this 10,000 chemical composition, uh, this curve corresponds to the number of um, known com compositions uh, uh, that is uh, registered in uh, ICDD PDF. This is a powder diffraction file. The, so among those 10,000, about 10%, uh, 1,000 something are uh, known compositions. So they are, they are registered. But the, the less 900 are unknown composition. But uh, this is oxide. And uh, if you are working on oxide, you may know that just in a uh, very long history of the uh, synthesis of such a binary oxide composed of such a simple element. So we thought uh, from the very beginning that there may be very difficult to find something new in this zone because for more than 100 years there have been a lot of people examining uh, those conclusions. So there are not much left over, or possibly there are zero left over in this green zone. But we, we try it anyway. The, for these uh, 10,000 chemical compression, uh, we have to use uh, altogether something like 66,000 synthesis conditions. So about, again, 10% of these synthesis, uh, synthesis conditions correspond to this uh, already known uh, com uh, compression. The rest are corresponding to unknown at the very beginning, we, did, we need some uh, training data. So we have chosen uh, these uh, 1,500 conditions uh, randomly uh, from each of zone and to get the uh, data, uh, input data. The, within this zone, we uh, obtained more this was also randomly chosen from this, this zone. And from this zone, we have chosen 619 data. And from this zone, although this is because this uh, census condition corresponds to this uh, already known compound, uh, we found that 50% of them are, only 50% are successful in the synthesis. The less uh, failure in synthesis. It means, uh, for example, uh, for one particular proportion, if you need 1,000 degrees C for synthesis, if we perform experiment at much lower temperature, like 700 degrees C, then you cannot synthesize that material successfully. So it ends up with a failure. So this is quite natural that uh, we fail to synthesize by 50%. But uh, oh, in this area, uh, which corresponds to the unknown composition, we failed to synthesize the target, uh, target composition material uh, by 100%, which means we succeeded 0%. So it is in agreement with our initial guess that it is very difficult to synthesize new in this zone. But anyway, we took this uh, 1,500 data as a training data and put it into the tensor decompression technique. The, as a data for tensor decompression, we used uh, this X-ray result. Since X-ray results are automatically obtained um, by uh, what, for example, this is uh, for the turbid material with aluminum molybdenum oxide. And the, if the turbid material were successfully synthesized, we gave a score of 2. Or, uh, we can choose any score <laughs> uh, as long as we want. We can give them 100 and 0 uh, in that sense. But then, anyway, in this case, 2 and 1. If it is unsuccessful, uh, we get score 1. 
So this is an uh, example that at lower temperature, uh, 600 degrees C or 700 degrees C or 800 degrees C, the, uh, we succeeded to sensitize the material, but at higher temperature, for some reason, it was not able to sensitize the material. We do not examine the reason for the failure, but probably some sublimation of this certain material or decomposition or many different kind of uh, cases uh, may exist. But uh, anyway, we obtained these scores, and the score is uh, will be standardized to be uh, the standard uh, within China's one one. So plus one corresponds to the successful synthesis condition, and uh, minus one corresponds unsuccessful conditions. So that is the reason why I thought that we can keep any uh, kind of score that we want. <coughs> so we put all these data into the tensor. Uh, this is uh, the tensor and uh, well for simplicity but uh, actually we made uh, four sort of tensor composer of uh, Number of element, uh, uh, sorry, uh, of the cancer with sturdy material number one, number two, and compression, iron temperature. This is for solar, but uh, let me explain pseudo order. This is sturdy material number one, and sturdy material number two, and compression. And uh, if the uh, uh, result is successful, we get uh, this orange from here. If it is not successful, then we get uh, unsuccessful. Blue one here. This corresponds to the score plus one and the minus one. So there are many unexperimented conditions shown by white uh, color. And this is the original tensor. The, we decompose this tensor into uh, this core tensor with three matrix to have this uh, deconstructed tensor. So based on that, uh, we can estimate the recommendation score for the unexperimented condition. So this is similar to the uh, e-commerce to get the recommendation score for the unbought uh, uh, or not yet uh, bought uh, item. So, for unexperimented conditions, some of them are uh, shows very good uh, recommendation scores, some are not. And uh, among them, uh, we can rank the uh, uh, recommendation scores according to the uh, obtained recommendation scores. And among them, uh, among top 300, there are 135 conditions located in this zone. The rest of that 165 are located in this zone. Although this is a uh, uh, correspond to known compression, we took randomly these uh, conditions, so there are some of the conditions which were not yet experimented. But anyway, uh, there are 135 conditions uh, which shows good recommendation scores that correspond to 75 completions. This is smaller than uh, this number because some uh, material shows different uh, uh, conditions such as uh, different temperature which shows good uh, recommendation scores. Anyway, we got this. And uh, uh, for all those 300 recommendation scores, we did uh, synthesis experiment. So this is the result for the synthesis experiment. And uh, this shows, the uh, orange one shows the successful synthesis. Again, the blue one corresponds to the unsuccessful uh, synthesis conditions. And the successful conditions are not always uh, dominate the uh, cases, but uh, with the increase of the, uh, sorry, the horizontal axis corresponds to the standardized predicted score, 
the with increase of the predicted score, uh, the rate of the uh, successful result increase. So this is a fraction of successful condition with a standardized predicted score. With the increase of the predicted score, the fraction of successful condition increases in almost linearly. So it means the success rate is proportional to the recommendation score or predicted score. So if we perform uh, these uh, cases, then there is a good chance to find uh, new material of the uh, corresponding zone. But unfortunately, some those of the showing high recommendation score are located within this uh, uh, no conversion, but uh, there are some uh, conversion which are not very high in a uh, uh, score, but still uh, quite uh, possible to get uh, uh, successful synthesis. Now, actually, among them, uh, we found some new pseudo-binary, as yet unknown pseudo-binary composition. For this uh, lanthanum for vanadium to oxide, the recommendation score was something like that, 27 or 0.19. It is not extremely high, but uh, uh, with this condition, we were able to find something new, which are not yet reported, but we and succeeded to synthesize that, and also we succeeded to characterize this material. And also for uh, this lantern antimony containing material, uh, we got this new material. So based on that type of analysis, uh, we were successfully synthesized two material, two pseudo-binary oxide, uh, within this green zone, which we saw at the beginning, uh, is not possible to find anything new. The other uh, weekend cookers, we are not professional of the synthesis, but uh, with the use of the recommendation system, it was possible to find quite efficiently this type of new <coughs> So this is the end of my talk, but uh, using this type of recommendation system, it is not only useful for, to predict something theoretically, but also it is useful for the uh, really synthesis of uh, this type of new compound. And uh, I think uh, this is promising. So probably uh, I need some time for so this is the end of my talk, so if you have any questions, please do not hesitate.
for more general. Second one. Second one. Okay. And the uh, question is, uh, did I ever try the, the classification technique for synthesis experiment? Is that the question? I understand that you try to zero or one. Yes. Maybe maybe there are three options for that in my case. Can we use the same technique? Well this was in this case uh, sorry. Zero or plus one and zero or plus one minus one or something like that. And uh, it can also be used for the binary classification because the purpose is not to use this one, but the purpose is to predict the score of the unexperimented condition. So it's not necessary to put into the tensor. Instead, we can <coughs> use binary classification technique as well. And uh, <coughs> I don't know which technique provides a better uh, result. But in this case, we use uh, uh, tensor recommendation without any reason. And we didn't do the binary classification because binary classification, uh, this tensor decomposition technique outperformed quite nicely than uh, binary classification. Binary classification is quite, uh, say, simple <clears throat> way and uh, we thought this is more sophisticated but uh, it very much depends on the data so we should be careful and we are right we, we have to compare many different kind of algorithms to get better results. <laughs> Parts of the presentation, I have just notified you uh, intersect the three database at the same time. Uh, why didn't you concentrate on the intersection points uh, of the uh, candidate uh, compound uh, database samples when you feed your training data? Just concentrate on the first day, uh, just one database. If you, let's say, try your system with the intersection point compound, uh, with the what train. What is the inter intersection? In, uh, in the first theoretical part, not the synthesis part, in the intersection of the three dat database you showed uh, presentation 13. The first part? Yeah, the first part. So your question is why? why yes. The bringer method, the intersection point of the three sets. Why didn't you train your uh, algorithm with the intersection, uh, intersection samples? Yeah, the, the intersection point. Because you are uh, finding the similarities of the feature space with the uh, three uh, sets. In this case, no. Uh, in the really? Yesterday's talk, we used similarities, but. Here we do not use any similarities. Yeah, I know, and but the, and the, well, from my viewpoint, this uh, does not have any meaning. This is just by coincidence. This ICSD has this type of registry. ICDP has this registry. That's all. But uh, no, no clear reason why. For your tensor comp decomposition technique, if you train your data with intersection points. Wouldn't be better uh, enhance your uh, results more better than the case? I do not understand your point because this was just used for the training set and the others are used for the test set. That's all. And uh, this intersection or overlapping is just by coincidence. And, uh, I don't, normally, uh, as a data scientist, if you train your algorithm uh, with a more data, your system becomes more uh, sophisticated and precise. Yes, right. That's why I am. Uh, right, right. But we have so small number of data, so 
we cannot increase this so so easily. Okay. Uh, so if we can increase that easily, of course, by some kind of automated experiment, probably that will be uh, possible to be increased. Uh, but uh, at the present moment, it is not that easy. Yeah. 